Okay, for today's review topic, we're going to find ourselves at the end of World War I. And at the end of World War I, there has been this genuine, optimistic uh, effort by the United States and largely of Woodrow Wilson to bring not only closure to the end of World War I, but continue to make the world safe for democracy. And back in the United States, there's just not this uh, same appeal, this, this same um, appreciation uh, to continue more crusading on the domestic front and, and more involvement in world affairs. In fact, it's the direct opposite. There's a movement to, as William Harding would say, return to normalcy. And in that is this return to isolationism. And there's a, a group of senators, uh, one which is led by Gerald P. Nye, who, who believe that World War I was not necessarily as described uh, all about freedom of the seas and protecting American shipping and making the world safe for democracy. Nye believes that there's some evidence that potentially uh, America got pulled into World War I uh, because of our munitions dealers, that there was an economic opportunity uh, for a class of Americans, a wealthy class of entrepreneurs and businessmen uh, to literally become the merchants of death during World War I and sell munitions and make lots of money at the same time you know, rack up a, a, a series of debt in which the United States had to help the Allies win the war at the end. So today's topic is called the Nye Committee. And Gerald P. Nye is a senator out of the state of North Dakota. In fact, he's, he's one of the youngest senators who happens to be in Congress at the time. And he is looking for uh, an opportunity to make his mark uh, heading up a committee to investigate the munitions deals leading into World War I, uh, to, to see if there's anything that can be found that, that is relevant in the sense that uh, there was more to the picture than what was being distributed or communicated by the President and the American press. And upon his findings, Knife realizes uh, that there were a lot of bankers, including J.P. Morgan, uh, business lenders as well, who were helping finance and not only lend money, uh, but look for opportunities to capitalize on selling uh, weapons of war uh, to the countries participating in World War I. And consequently, because of that, the United States was responsible uh, for that, uh, you know, that lending of money. If we were to get paid back or if these bankers were to, to get collect on their interest from the payments, we were going to have to make sure that the Allies won the war. Uh, and in doing so, Nye argued that that's what pulled the United States into World War I. And of course, as we move throughout the 1920s, and as we move uh, into the 1930s, there's this overwhelming uh, desire to not get involved in foreign affairs. And we, we refrain from joining the League of Nations. Uh, we enjoy a boom period throughout the 1920s of, of, you know, enjoying the roaring 20s. And then by the time we get to the 1930s, there, there is some, a large portion, we could say, uh, of nice finding that the government supports. In doing so, it really contributes to what are called the Neutrality Acts that come out uh, from 1935 through 1939. And it really keeps Roosevelt from being able to, to respond to the growing threats that are now emerging in Japan and, and in Italy and in you know, Germany, the rise of Hitler, uh, because America can't lend, America can't send uh, and in a sense uh, get involved like they did in World War I and it really kind of prohibits the United States from stepping into a role that potentially might have saved a lot of lives and might have turned the story around of how uh, we end up in World War II. Uh, but that is a big what if. So just remember in the sake of this mini lesson here today that the Nye Committee was a, a committee that was formed to investigate 
why America got pulled into World War I besides the reasons uh, that are known as the, the main causes of World War I, uh, that there was an economic reason as well, and Gerald P. Nye definitely exposed that American munitions dealers aided uh, and deserved this title of merchants of death.